Welcome back to the Master Tech, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to take your breadboard hobby circuit and turn it into a professional, high quality PCB or printed circuit board. Now, if you've ever made a hobby circuit, you probably started by making it on one of these. This is a solderless breadboard. And basically, it's thin strips of metal internally jumpered together so that you can just easily land wires and components on it and test your circuitry, but their flexibility and advantage as an extremely modular system is also their disadvantage when it comes to wanting to make something more or less permanent. And this is where turning an application into a printed circuit board is an extremely powerful option. Now the simplest and fastest way to go from a microcontroller and a breadboard circuit to a rigid board is with one of these. This is a prototyping printed circuit board, but it's basically just a breadboard where you solder the components in place rather than just sticking them in. The only difference is you technically do have a pretty rigid, more or less complete circuit when you're done soldering in to one of those. But a far better option is a formal printed circuit board. So this video is going to focus on how you can actually design and create your own PCB from a breadboard circuit. And then we'll also touch on how you can get one made by companies that do this sort of thing for makers like the sponsor of this video, PCBWay, and we'll have more about them at the end of the video. So today I'm gonna use a completely free PCB design software called KeyCAD, which is one of the most common free PCB designers out there. This lets you create an electrical schematic from scratch, automatically import device components and their footprints for 3D models, and automatically import that electrical schematic into a PCB designer space where you can tweak the actual traces as well as the physical layout of your components. And then at the end, it lets you export your project in a variety of formats created for PCB creation services. One we'll be using today is called a Gerber file, and it's probably the most common PCB file that those manufacturing services would ask you to upload. The circuit I'm going to use for my example today is this one, and although there's a lot of wires going on, the functionality is actually pretty simple. I have 12 220 ohm resistors wired into LEDs, and then four capacitive touch sensors, which each need power and 5 volts, as well as a signal wire to tell us when you're touching it. Then the only other output is a servo, which gets driven by a pulse width modulation pin. And if you're really fascinated about this circuit and the basic code I have loaded on it, I did a building GUIs in Python for Arduino video already, where we use this same circuit for that project. So if you're really curious about this breadboard, you can check that video out. For now, just know that I have four capacitive touch inputs, I have 12 LED outputs, and then I have one servo motor being driven with a PWM pin. Now let's boot up KeyCAD and take a look at how to turn our breadboard into a PCB. So I'm going to open KeyCAD up, select File, New Project, give it a good name, and go right into the schematic editor. If we end up wanting to create any custom components or any components we didn't find in KeyCAD's already included extensive libraries of components, we would do that in the symbol editor. And when we're ready to drop components into a PCB layout, we'll do that in the PCB editor. There's a lot of cool and useful functions in KeyCAD, but let's do one thing at a time here. Make the electrical schematic, start by adding some symbols relating to your physical components. And since I want to drive this project with an Arduino Nano, which I will mention is actually a PCB itself already, so that'll be the first thing that I look up when I press A to add symbol or click the icon and search for Arduino Nano. Most stuff that you would commonly use in a circuit already exists in the default KeyCAD included libraries. And if you can't find it, chances are there's a link to the KeyCAD footprint or symbol available from the manufacturer. And if they don't, it's not too hard to make from scratch, but that's enough material to be a whole different video. I'll drop in 12 LEDs, of which there are tons of types, and it doesn't matter a ton during the electrical schematic which you pick, because it's super easy easy to change later before finalizing, then 12 resistors and identify them as 220 ohm. Then what I actually want for my servo and capacitive touch sensors are pins and sockets. I want ports ready to go for me to connect my components to them, but I'm going to be installing this in a larger box where I'm gonna have the capacitive touch sensors and servo a little bit physically spaced away from the PCB. So I just want pins and sockets to easily land my stuff on. I don't want to have my capacitive touch sensors or servo physically embedded in the PCB, but I do want it to be simple and easy to connect them. So I search for generic connectors. For the servo, I'll do a pin connector, meaning the part 
part on the PCB will be a male, and then the four socket connectors, which will be the female connectors for the capacitive touch sensors. I could make all five the same, but this is also a good way to keep the servo visually distinct from the capacitive touch sensors. There will also be labels on the board itself, but no reason not to make extra sure here. Now having a pretty schematic really only matters if you're working for a team or you're doing this professionally, or you have an extremely large project that's going to be hard to keep track of. Making sure that all of the connections from point to point are accurate is the most important thing. And then when we build the PCB in the next step, you'll see the opportunity for prettying it up sort of shows up there and that's a little bit more important. Now the last thing we want to do in the schematic editor before we jump over to the three-dimensional PCB editing is assign each of our components a footprint. And this is very important because on the electrical schematic, there's just an icon indicating what that component relates to, but we need to go into the footprint editor. We need to tell the KiCad software what actual physical component that corresponds to. So picking the symbol is one thing, picking the physical footprint that it occupies in space is another thing. And at this point, you don't really want to copy mine exactly. You want to use the LEDs and resistors, components that you plan on buying, or you can go to a website like PCBWay, JLC PCB, and they have component libraries that you can order through them. So if you want to buy a fully assembled PCB from them, be sure to check those hobbyist websites for standard libraries that they can provide. You'll pay a little bit extra because you're buying the components through them, but you also get the convenience of knowing they have the component you're looking for. And feel free to keep playing around with these footprints, especially after you see your first iteration of PCB as a 3D model. It's not hard to change the footprint and then go back into the model and see what that changed and affected. But with our footprints assigned, we can finally pop into the PCB editor. And here we're going to start by updating the PCB layout with all of the components from our schematic. And anytime we make a schematic or footprint change while we're iterating on this, we can just hit this button again to update all of the components in our project. And a quick note about the layout of the PCB editor, we can see on the side menu all of the various layers of design that go into a PCB, but lucky for us, it's actually pretty much this simple. We want to be able to draw electrical connections or traces on the back and front layers of copper and add the text to the front or back layers using the silk screens. And then define our outer dimensions using edge cuts. There are things you can dive into about every layer and I am for sure oversimplifying here. But for basic design and beginners, this really is it. If you're looking to design a board that has more than two layers of copper, and you want mid-layer vias or anything else like that, you're probably advanced enough to figure out how to accomplish that with this software. But just know for beginners, a standard two-layer board where you edit the text and the copper on both sides, and then define your edge cuts is typically all you have to edit in this mode. So place the components in locations that feel fairly logical to you. And actually, placing the components is a little bit more art than science, because as you'll see when you start drawing your trace, Places. The software is pretty good about finding a path that could work for your traces, so long as you're not forcing it to repeatedly jump over existing paths of copper. At the same time, you want the physical layout of the components to be something logical for how you're actually going to install it into a larger project or connect it or whatever. So for me, I'm not gonna spend too long talking about placing the components. You can just see that I'm gonna have my four blue, four green, and four red LEDs in three separate rows, each with a resistor feeding them. Then on the other side of my board, I'll place the four sockets for my capacitive touch sensors. And then at the top of the board, opposite from the USB port of my Nano, that is where I will put the pins for my servo motor. And now with a basic acceptable layout, let's jump into the trace drawing because also sometimes when you start drawing your traces, you'll notice that you need to move some components around so that the traces can hit all of the points they need. And I mentioned top and bottom layers of copper before, but I didn't really dive into what that means. Assuming you have a super basic understanding of PCBs, you know that they're thin layers of copper with dielectric material in between them. Most components that are through holes are also plated with copper, so they touch all layers of copper. This means that on a basic two layer PCB board, you can draw wiring traces on the top or the bottom layer. And so theoretically, you could have all of your ground traces looking from above like they're overlapping with all of your hot 
five volt traces, but you're not creating a short because they're on different physical layers of copper. This is really, really cool. This is the obvious advantage of PCBs, and this is how incredibly complicated circuitry gets packed down into these super simple and compact PCBs. So even for a basic hobby board like mine, it would be incredibly difficult to get all of the ground connections and all of my pin outputs on the same layer of the PCB. When I go to draw traces, all I really have to do is go from endpoint to endpoint, and you can see the software kind of snapping those traces into positions they think will be logical and into positions where they won't interfere with other traces. And then when you find yourself unable to make a ground connection because your pin connections are just too tight, you can switch to the second layer of copper and you can do your ground traces on there. So in the software, it's indicated by a different color, which is really, really useful. And just know that your back and your front layers of copper will not touch or interfere with each other. Once you've taken a crack at getting your traces on the board, this is a good time to start using the 3D previewer. Because one, you might catch something that's off or not quite right about your board. And two, you get a really good idea for what this thing is actually going to look like. And you can use KeyCAD's built-in design rules checker to see if they have any suggestions suggestions for how to make your board look a little bit better. They'll also call out things like unassigned footprints or overlapping traces or unassigned traces. So double check that everything looks like it's coming from the pin you want it to come to. Everything's interconnected the way you expect it to. And be sure to double check the front and the back in the 3D editor and make sure there's no surprising things popping up. If you want to use a specific manufacturer or you know that you need a certain file format, to send to that manufacturer, be sure to double check with them what format they need. KeyCAD almost certainly can export it in that format for you. Like I said before, most commonly you'll be looking for a Gerber file. So go to File, then Fabrication Outputs, and select Gerber. You can leave those settings essentially as default and hit Plot. Be sure to choose a good directory where you can find those files since we need to zip them up in just a moment. Also from this window, hit generate drill files as well and get those drill files. There are other things you can generate here, but Gerbers and drills are the only things I've needed in my experience. Then go into that directory, compress and zip all the drill and Gerber files together in just one location. I'm not exactly sure if it would hurt anything, but I never include that Gerber job file and no one's ever needed it before. Now with that whole packet zipped, you're ready to upload it to a PCB hobby board manufacturer. Like the sponsor of today's video, PCB way. It's super easy to get a quote on your PCB prototype. If you really dislike soldering like I do, they also have the option for PCB assembly, where you can upload a CSV file of all of your bill of materials and they can assemble and solder the boards for you. Pricing and turnaround times are really good and their engineering teams review every order before production to make sure they don't see any major issues with the job. Additionally, their support is super responsive and friendly. Beyond that, there's a ton of cool customization options like getting your PCBs made in different colors with different colored text as well. And they also have high quality CNC prototyping and 3D printing services. So you can seriously get everything you need to make a production quality prototype right here on their website. Be sure to check them out in the link below this video. And thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. When my first boards that I designed came in, they were super high quality. They looked so cool. And I'm really stoked to embed these in the final project I'm working on. So be sure that you're subscribed with that notification bell rung. You don't miss any of our cool, big upcoming projects. And now if you have any questions about any part of this process that we talked about in this video today, be sure to drop them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I think it is incredibly cool today how even an amateur hobbyist like myself can take a simple breadboard circuit like this and turn into a production quality, awesome, cool, high quality PCB. And obviously I'm not able to design your board for you, but I hope this video covered all of the major steps you need to know about to create your first printed circuit board. A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the reason we're able to do these cooler, bigger projects. As always, be sure to let me know what you wanna see more of on the channel in the comments below. Until next time, good luck with all of your projects and thanks for watching. Bye.